thanks for joining us today. Um, this is our first webinar of the series. We hope to have three, two more in the new year. Um, Bonson will be working with us closely to provide those, so I appreciate his help. Um, moving forward, we hope to have additional webinars on some of the technology um, that uh, is coming out into the future. I'm sorry about that. Uh, this is my first uh, webinar. I'm just scrolling through the slides there. It's, I shouldn't be doing that. I'll just be a second, fix that up. I might hand over to Bonson where he will go through the slides uh, with you. And if you have any questions throughout, just stop him and let him know. Uh, over to you, Bonson. Thank you, John. Thank you for the introduction and thank you, everybody, for making it a time to find out about where what the tariff changes are and also what uh, opportunities are available in your tariffs. So I'm just going to kick off. So pretty much my discussions today will be on, on tariffs, but um, I'll try and bring that to life with a number of case studies to show actual customers and the type of savings they can have by moving to different tariffs. As you know, the, the way that we use energy is changing. Uh, we have solar batteries, we have digital meters, which is, you know, give you information on half hour basis. Um, all these new technology does give opportunities as well as challenges. So um, I want to be quite upfront with, you know, what these changes are and, you know, Preparation is always good and we, we have a bit of time to prepare for these new tariffs so that we can work with you to ensure that the new tariffs uh, make sense for you. The reason for these new tariffs is that given the way we change, the way we use and generate electricity, uh, the cost drivers have changed in the uh, electricity industry. And as I go through the new tariffs, you'll be able to see a little bit more information about that. And one thing I just want to probably go through is a little bit of context in relation to uh, managing energy and getting the most you can out of your electricity connection. So I've called it a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. So the, the different pieces in the jigsaw puzzle that, that all comes together to help work out what the best solution is. So today we're talking a fair bit about TAF, so um, effectively getting to learn a little bit more about how they work, which is number one. Number two is, is you know, using the insights that you have to see, you know, how are you using your energy, are you using more or less, are you getting uh, value from what you, you're using. Uh, we've got a tool called Energy Analysis, which is an online tool which customers can um, access 24 hours a day. Um, that goes hand in hand with tariffs, uh, especially we've got in Energy Analysis tools that actually compares different tariffs based on uh, months or years. Third part of Jigsaw Puzzle is using, you know, the changes in technology like solar or battery uh, to see whether they can actually help optimize your tariffs choices. Fourth thing is um, quite clearly, I'm not the, the farming expert, I'm, I'm the pricing expert, but you are the, the farming expert. So giving us feedback as to, you know, how does the, the interaction between one, two and three, does that actually give you what you need uh, for your operations? And if the way, you know, things have been explained or the, the way that things have been rolled out is not as good as it can be, do give us that feedback because we want to work with you to improve how um, we as a community um, manage our electricity challenges and opportunities. And fifth, um, which is very important, is, is to share the wins that you have so, you know, other customers, other farmers and uh, customers in the community can benefit from any learnings you have. Because electricity is, is a community asset and we want to make sure that it works well for each of the users in our community. 
So as many of you know, um, transitional tariffs, which includes tariff 62, 65, 66, is expiring after an eight year transitional period. Um, the reason we do have an eight year period is, is to ensure that customers have opportunity to be informed about what these changes are, uh, make any changes that they need, which is what I call a test phase as to what works and what doesn't work. Uh, review the results of any tests that you may do. It, it could be uh, trying out a new tariff or trying out new technology or changing operations, you know, whether that works or doesn't. Provide that feedback to us and, you know, we'll incorporate that feedback to see that, you know, any tweaks that are possible um, in any parts of the jigsaw puzzle can be made so we can have the best possible outcome for you. So this slide is pretty much a summary of you know, where we're going um, from transitional tariffs, which um, have historically have very long peak periods. So tariff 65, for example, has 12 hours of peak. Where we're going with the, the electricity industry is that, and, and in Queensland, is that our peak periods uh, doesn't need to be so long so we're moving towards shorter peak periods but um, which hopefully for many customers do give them an opportunity to shift their usage from peak to off peak period. Um, in the peak periods they, depending on a the tariff there they could be high usage rates or, or demand charges. Um, we have seen in uh, tariffs like 22A, 24 and 50 um, that's, that's the case where you have a shorter peak period, but you do have higher peak charges, either usage charges in for tariff 22A or demand charges in relation to tariff 24 and 50. We also want to uh, spend some time, probably a little bit today, but also in the future talking about interruptible tariffs. So many customers do have tariff fee free for their hot water, but what customers have not thought about is potentially using tariff 33 for other equipment, whether it's irrigation pumps or other farming or business operations equipment. So that's an opportunity that uh, could work for some customers and this is probably a good time to think about how it works for you or doesn't work for you. What I'll do now is, is gonna go through some case studies in relation to some customers who have uh, moved off a transitional tariff or where the uh, financial modeling shows that they're better off moving from a transitional tariff to a standard tariff. So the first case study I'm gonna do is a customer who is currently on tariff 66 and what their opportunities are on tariff 20. We appreciate that in the past, many customers may not have looked at TAF 20 because the usage rates on TAF 20 is higher than 66. It's still the case, but what we've seen in, in this financial year um, is that the usage rates for TAF 20 have dropped. And depending on what the AER and the QCA will do for next year, potentially it could drop again next year. At the same time, TAF 66, the, the usage rates have uh, stayed the same in 2018 and 2019. So we, we now have an opportunity where some customers can move from TAF 66 to TAF 20. Um, even though the usage rates from 20 is higher than 66, it's not as high as before. And the savings that I'm gonna talk about really re revolves around the supply and the pump charges. So. As you can see on this table, Power 20 has a lower supply charge and doesn't have a pump capacity charge. So the case study is actually based on a real customer. Um, and the way I'm gonna explain it is, is start with the equipment and then work through on the billing uh, impacts for both TAF 66 and TAF 20. So, this customer has a 40 kilowatt pump um, used for irrigation. 
it's an old school pump, so it's, it's not a variable speed. So when it's on, it just uses 40 kilowatts of power. And um, for customers who are interested in demand, effectively, if you have 40 kilowatt pump, then your, your maximum demand is going to be 40 kilowatt. But in this example, what I'm going to do is, is just uh, show how a customer with a 40 kilowatt pump, they use it for 300 hours in a 90 day period, um, which is a 14% utilization rate. If you times 300 by 40, you get 12 megawatt hours. So that's how the calculation works. And what you can see on the right hand side is a bar graph showing um, tariff 66 and tariff 20 on that scenario. You can see, as I mentioned in the last slide, the UC charges on tariff 20 is higher than 66, but there's massive savings you can see from the fixed charges uh, on TAF 20 compared to TAF 66. So um, instead of paying about 1.1K in fixed charges, you're paying closer to $100 uh, for TAF 20. So it's a little bit above 100 actually, but I've just rounded it to one decimal point. So when you actually look at the savings on the, the fixed charges, that more than compensates it, slightly incre uh, increasing the variable charge. So your quarterly bill is lower on tariff 20 compared to 66. Um, at this point, I might just take a brief break if there's any questions in relation to this particular case study or to the, um, the tariff 66 or 20. Just get, we'll get you to drop that in the chat box if you have any questions for Bonson at the moment, please. No questions, guys? Okay, I'll move on. But obviously, if you have... For, oh, does this farm have the same usage, pattern of usage each year? So, um, no. So, I, I've purely done this on a quarterly bill uh, based on uh, the fact that customers get the quarterly bill and they can literally pull up the bill and get the calculator to work it out. So... It is, it is true that customers can or vary between quarter to quarter. So um, this example works the best if, if every quarter they're the same. But if they have other quarters that their variable usage or their, their usage is um, lower and higher, then what we can do is actually model it and then analysis to see whether you're better off or not. I think the, um, and whether it's summer or not doesn't really matter actually. So, um, because neither 66 or 20 are, are summer tariffs. So whether you're using this in summer or non-summer, the, the calculations will still work the same. Um, for a customer who has uh, low summer usage, but, higher non-summer usage, uh, one of the things we can talk about is tariff 24, which um, if possible, I can have uh, the opportunity to talk through later um, today. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, I think the other thing I might just, just mention is that if, you know, the next quarter they use less usage, the savings are actually even higher because you can see in the the variable component if, if someone uses less that 2.9 will drop i mean that will also drop from 66 but you know you're, you're going to get even more savings for, for lower usage a low usage and a high pump capacity uh, they tend to save on, on tariff 20. Um, one thing we might uh, take as a note probably after this meeting is potentially um and potentially in the second seminar talk through some break-even scenarios in relation to 
uh, 66 to 20. So, you know, if next period you, you're using less or using more, what does it mean um, on tower of 20 and 66? Okay, I might just go to the next slide. Okay. Oh. No. Okay, so um, now I'm going to look at TAF 62 versus TAF 20. Uh, the reason I'm looking at this is because um, a lot of the customers on TAF 62. So, you know, between 62 and 66, you would have um, quite a significant portion of uh, farmers on either of these two TAFs. Again, I'm going to compare to TAF 20. The, the reason I'm comparing to TAF 20 is most customers um, will probably end up on TAF 20 uh, in 2020. So, sorry, 2021. So um, this is probably a good example to work with. The same situation happens to 62 versus 20 in the sense that 62, TAF 62 hasn't changed in the last two years, but TAF 20, the usage rates have come down. Um, what I'm going to do is that, you know, using the same example as last time, 12 megawatt hours quarterly bill, um, what is the comparison between 62 and 20? So again, I'm gonna use the exact same example, uh, 40 kilowatt pump, 12 megawatt hour, quality bill, 300 hours of usage. Uh, the only additional information I provide in this case study is that this customer has one third peak usage on tower 62 and two thirds on off peak half 62. So effectively 100 hours on peak and 200 hours on off peak. So where the calculations for half 62 comes in is, is what is your weighted average usage rate? So appreciate there is a peak rate and an off peak rate, but depending on how much peak usage and how much off peak usage you have, um, that determines what your weighted average rate is for usage on TAF 62. And so someone in this scenario, one third usage on peak, their weighted average rate is 31 cents, which is actually higher than your any time rate on TAF 20. So that's pretty much where the savings are. Um, yes, it is true that TAF 20 has a higher supply charge than TAF 62. Um, it's not obvious here because of the the rounding, but 62 is still a little bit lower. Um, the savings you're getting is pretty much from the usage. So I'm just gonna go to the graph, just gonna point to it. So TAF 62, one third usage on peak, um, based on the assumptions we've gotten, points one and two, your variable rate, sorry, your variable bill or your usage bill is 3,200, and on TAF 20, it is 2,900. So that's where the savings come in. Um, okay. Also quite conscious that not all customers will work on TAF 20. So what happens if you're in a situation where TAF 20 does not work once you take your quality bill or you go to energy analysis and you do the calculations? So this slide is basically talking about a suite of tariffs that are available for uh, small customers in regional Queensland. So you can see on the left hand side tariff 20, which is an anytime tariff, it's got the highest rate, 24 cents. And then you've got the other end of the spectrum, tariff 62 off peak, which has the lowest rates, which is at 16 cents. So Effectively, what you're seeing is, is a trade-off between availability and the usage rate. So the more you can constrain your usage to off-peak periods, or if you're on TAF 33, the TAF 33 periods, the, the lower rate that you can have. And I appreciate not all customers can constrain their usage to 
um, off peak periods. So um, there are absolutely um, good reasons why certain operations need to operate uh, 24 hours a day. But if you are able to review your operations or, or the old technology use so that you are closer to the to the right hand side of this table towards the off peak rates, then you can save money straight away compared to, to power trade. And what I'm going to do is given you know 62 off peak is going to be uh, phased out in 2021 is look at some alternative tariffs that you may wish to consider. One that I've got on this slide is tariff 24. It's a seasonal time of use demand tariff um, with a flat rate all year round. So where the peak off peak equation comes in is that if you use during the peak period, you'll pay a much higher peak demand charge. So you can see on the right, um, you've got a peak demand charge of $81 per kilowatt and off peak demand charge of $8.23. So definitely customers who are interested in 24, um, the key to saving on this tariff is to minimize usage during the peak period. And currently this is a tariff that's already in the Gazette so you can access it today. Uh, the peak period is from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, in the summer months, so December, January, February, during weekdays. The other thing to note is your peak charge or demand is actually the average of your four highest peak daily demands during that month. So if you had, you know, the odd half an hour, an hour that you're using in the peak demand, it doesn't mean you're going to get charged a whole lot. What happens is we, we average um, all the time periods from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, during that month or that billing period. And then say, you know, if you have one day where you've used a lot in peak, but the other 19 days you haven't, then your average peak demand will drop. Might just go to a few questions if anyone else has something to add there. I'll just drop that in the chat box and Watson will be able to answer your questions. Yeah, good question about, um, I'm just gonna read out the question. So TAF 33 has a minimum of 18 hours per day. Um, are farmers receiving 18 hours or 24 hours? So uh, this depends on what uh, electricity feeder you're coming off basically. So um, we've got parts of Queensland where uh, it's a set, clock or, or a fairly regular clock it's probably a time time clock which is probably a better way to explain it so they do tend to get turned off um, regularly um, and it's up to six hours of outage so definitely a minimum of 18 um, it could vary between 18 and 24 it, it, you could be out for uh, two hours for example so we know in in, in southeast Queensland um, you know, for example, if you, if you have 33 on hot water, you, you do get turned off a certain period each day. So um, if you're in that kind of beta situation, um, then uh, you will have some outage. Uh, other areas, we, we're moving to what, what we call dynamic load switching. So um, it won't get turned off every day. Um, so you could have quite large chunks of periods where you're available 24 hours and then there might be certain days or weeks where you are getting between 18 and 24 hours. So um, we're actually running a trial at the moment for TAF 33. So um, we are recruiting large customers to go on the TAF 33 trial. 
Um, so our large customers over 100 megawatt hours. And part of this trial is that we're looking at giving customers notification when there is an outage. So if you are interested in Tariff 33, you're a large customer, um, do contact me afterwards. I, I can provide my email details after this, as well as the, the project manager looking after Tariff 33. So if you're interested in Tariff 33 and you, you're a large customer and you want to get notification, um, that's one way of doing it. Obviously you want to roll out notifications to uh, small customers as well, but that's currently not available. Um, in relation to small customers on 33, which is a majority of customers on this webinar, there is no notification. Um, what we are looking at is if you have a digital meter and you're on NG analysis, you can see uh, when it's turned off and on uh, the day afterwards. So appreciate it's not, not a perfect answer, but uh, we are working towards uh, more notifications for TAF33 outages. Um, the other question is, can anyone access TAF33 right now? The answer is, a conditional yes, and it's going to be a, a more unconditional going forward. So the way to access TAF33 is you need a primary TAF and TAF33. So usually TAF20 and 33. So you could have a, a lamp on TAF20 and your irrigation pump on 33. So um, if you are interested, then um, do contact us. We'll work with you on a case-by-case -case basis as to whether um, you can get on it and whether it's advantageous to you or not because uh, depending on your pump size there, there is some uh, setup costs associated with it especially if your pump's more than seven kilowatt in capacity. Um, next question I have a 178 kilowatt mode on a pump and 110 kilowatt on another. First one's use six to 10 days per year, 24 by seven. So if I'm reading this correctly, in one year, you're only using it up to 10 days. Um, Maybe we we might, we might yeah. do that offline as, as to, to what, what that, um, question is so I can can um, help you properly yeah we'll provide an email address for you um, if you want to get in touch there we can answer that a little bit more definitely for you does that help so bear in mind we thank you um, definitely um, keep keep um, posting any questions you've got we will um, uh, address all of them either during the webinar or afterwards so so please um, don't be shy and keep sending those questions across. Yeah, we are a little bit pressed for time, sorry, but um, we will kick on and um, we will help you if you get in touch. So what I'm going to do is just quickly run through this case study and then I'll hand over back to um, John here, um, who's got some announcements as well. So this case study is a customer on TAF24. It is a little bit unique, so I appreciate not every customer can replicate what Aaron is doing, but the point of this case study is just, just to show you what uh, customers have done in the field. And it, it hopefully will get your mind to think through it, even though you, your situation is not exactly the same as Aaron. Aaron's a producer of bananas and avocados. Um, he uses cool rooms to keep the fruit and vegetables in optimal condition. So he's, it was previously on TAF 62. So any customer who is currently or previously on 62 and 65, potentially they make good candidates on TAF 24, partly because customers on 62 and 65 would have more real life experience of you know, what peak and off peak looks like. And the good thing about Aaron is when he was on 62, he did actually shift some of his load from peak to off peak. Um, and the other thing that makes him a good candidate for TAF24 is that his summer usage is not as high as his non-summer period. So making it a good site to test 
TAF 24 compared to 62. Uh, the other thing that Aaron did was he installed solar and turned off the cooler on between 5 and 9 p.m. to avoid the TAF 62 peak charges, um, which was good. And the other thing is once you've got solar, you, you do reduce your grid usage. And in Aaron's example, he actually went from a large customer to a small customer, which generally is a good thing because small customer TAFs are generally lower than large customer TAFs. Um, he, by turning off the cool room between five and nine, it, it meant that he avoided that peak period. And the way the nature of those two crops is that you can manage variations in temperature for short periods. So appreciate not every product can um, deal with these temperature variations, but he he found in his experience that he can. Um, the Difficulty is obviously by turning it off at 4 p.m. Um, solar is not enough to make up the difference, so he is experiencing some peak charges on half 62. Um, what I've got down the bottom is, is a graph showing uh, usage uh, this year versus last year. Uh, it's from our old application called Energy Check, but it's very similar to what you can see in energy analysis. So one of the good things about energy analysis is you can get this kind of information. Um, very, very timely basis. Um, so in summary, this the, the reason why they're good on TAF24 is uh, they've got solar covering the peak period, they've got um, ability to, to switch off between five and eight, uh, their refrigeration motors are not particularly huge, so you know, even when there's an issue, the demand charges are not so high. So um, when we modeled this customer, he, he could save as much as $5,000 on TAF24, which is pretty pretty good going based on what his bills were on 62, which was 28 grand. Um, I'm just gonna go through to the next slide and then I'll hand over to John. Um, the learnings we had with this case study is that um, even though it was good on paper and it was actually good in, in theory, um, we know that solar can be off certain times, like if there's a storm or heavy cloud cover. And so that is something to keep in mind. So now I'm going to hand over to John. Thanks, Bonson, for um, providing us with uh, some info there. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, it's best to get in contact with us um, via email. Um, note down that email address there and we'll address any questions you have in regards to tariffs or energy efficiency matters um, if, you, if anything pops up into the future. We do have some case studies available on our website. They're pretty easy to access. Um, you jump on the website there. Um, that'll You can filter out by technology type, farm type. Uh, we